Okay, so we're going to get started on the first discussion that I'd like to start here. I'm going to keep my eye on the time so I keep it short. Um, but that is management of the cord when it is wrapped around the baby's neck. Which um, really cord wraps get such a bad rap because <laughs> hey, good fun. Um, because they are actually just a variation of normal and they happen in 25 to 40 percent of births. So it's not like it's just once in a while. And like you're gonna get a cord wrap frequently. It doesn't necessarily mean anything's wrong or that anything bad happened to the baby or that you need to do anything really extraordinary to make it better. Um, they used to, what they used to do was they would um, cut the cord right at the baby's, at the introitus there, you know, cut the cord and clamp it if it was too tight to unwind. And then they would, you know, deliver the baby with one third of its blood volume, blood blooded into, you know, the mother is it still in the, in the placenta. That's not a healthy way to have your baby come into the world. It puts them at risk for neonatal, uh, well, for all kinds of respiratory problems. And the lack of blood volume, it doesn't help the, it creates a problem when the lung, lungs are trying to expand. <coughs> when the baby's transitioning to room air, it needs all the blood it can get for the pressure. The pressure needs to build up in the lungs so that the lungs can fully expand and the alveoli can fill with air and push the fluid out, which takes the pressure of the blood. So when you, when you cut a cord before like an hour postpartum, you're basically taking a part of that baby's blood volume out of their body and it's not correct practice. It's been done in this country for the last 50 years or 100 years or whatever. Um, traditionally and in many countries though, the, the placenta is left intact, the baby is left intact, and the and the cord will just fall off within a day or two and the placenta is just wrapped up near the baby. Okay, so let's talk about this cord. So, so if the baby is coming out, I'm not going to use the pelvis because it's kind of sticky, but you get the idea that the baby is inside the mother, right? Here's the, here's the front of the mother's body and usually the baby's coming down in a um, with the back facing the front of the lung hopefully or to one side or the other and then you know sometimes the odd time well, like I said kind of frequently we'll have either one or maybe two and sometimes even three <laughs> this baby's been swimming <laughs> okay so now, what we were taught in midwifery school sometimes was to, you know, years ago, I was taught this anyway, was to pull this cord around the head and just try to get out that way. There may be the odd time where that's going to work, and I've done it a couple of times, but honestly, really the most effective way I have learned is just to birth the baby, you know, if the cord's not too short, and you can birth the baby, but keep the baby's head. Okay, let's just imagine how this is going to go. So maybe I'll actually do this. Let's see if I can do this with the placenta inside. Okay, the, the baby's head is coming down. And you are birthing this, the baby's actually birthing through the birth canal. I'm just going to pretend it's through because it's a little too big for it. But okay, it's coming through, and here's the mother's vagina. Let's pretend this is this is the mother's opening here. Okay. Now, as this baby births, we are going to kind of somersault the baby. The cord will stay around it usually this way so that the baby's head is near the mother's body. We're not putting tension on the cord. That's the key. We've got the head somersault. The baby has somersaulted out. We've helped the baby somersault so that the baby's head stays near the introitus. 
We're not pulling the baby's head way over here because that'll stretch the cord out. We won't have room to unwrap. If we keep the head near the cord, then it's just a matter of, or near the mother's introitus, then it's just a matter of doing the, the untangling. And I tell you, I've had to unwrap cords for years and I've safely unwrapped all of them that way. I've never had to cut a cord in 35 years of midwifery practice in Canada, United States, Jamaica, and Mexico. So I've seen a lot of birth and um, I'm not saying there would never be a time, but I honestly don't think it's a good practice. You could be ready to do it, but it is not a good practice to cut the cord on the neck especially in a, ro in a low resource setting where you need that blood volume to have that help that baby survive what's coming. So when the cord is wrapped, keep the baby's head close to the mother's introitus, somersault the baby and unwind. And I'm telling you, you will go instinctual. If you really trust this process, this process, and you really have a like a, a strong faith that it can be a positive experience and that you're there for a reason to help this mother, which is all true. Um, you'll just kind of like do it and you'll just like, oh, I did that. I didn't even think about it. You you go into instinct when you really are helping somebody in an emergency, I think. And you know it has to be done and there's, there's angels there guiding your hands. Um, I know for an absolute fact that angels guide us and that angels are at every single birth that we're at. So whether you can see them or not, of course, is, is uh, not the, not the um, issue. It's, it's whether they're there or not, and they are there, I promise you. And so it helps you to have faith when you know that there are help, there's help there. And you'll have the specific type of help that you need, and I promise you that. Angels will always be there, and prayer, prayer. Doesn't matter what religion you are, even if you don't believe in God. When all this stuff is going down, a lot of people will start believing in God. <laughs> that always happens. 911, suddenly everybody started going to church after, or 911, you know. Um, there is a God. I know it's true. I know there's angels, and I know that we're held in His hand and that we have no need to fear. So, bless you.